What I have here is a little contraption called the Chess Challenger 10. I did a little research on this thing. It was built in 1979. One of the first chess playing computer programs available to the general public. So we're going to find out today just what the state of technology was in the late 70s. I'm going to play against this thing. It's in remarkable condition. It has all the original manuals and everything. All right, I got it all set up here. Now, according to the manual, there's 10 different levels. The most advanced being postal chess, which takes up to 24 hours to make a move. So obviously, I don't want to wait that long. So I got it on level four, advanced, which it says will take an average of a minute and 20 seconds to move. So that seems like a pretty good amount of time. And I'll give myself about a minute and 20 seconds per move as well. I'm going to make the first few moves on here, and then I'm going to start inputting the moves onto my computer program on my laptop so I can record it that way. It'll be a little easier to see what's going on. All right, so I'm going to start with E2 to E4. And what's going on here? What do I got to hit? Enter. Okay, it came up with a move immediately. It says E7 to E5. Okay, king's pawn opening. So I'm going to go G1 to F3 and enter. Okay, B8 to C6, F1 to B5, A7, A6. Okay, this is a very standard opening. Rui Lopez, B5 to A4. Enter. G8 to F6. Alright, so the computer's moving instantly so far, so it's got an opening book. Alright, so he put his knight there, and here I'm going to castle. Alright, so I'm going to switch this off now and then start following this game on my laptop. Computer played b5, driving back my bishop, and then decided to take this pawn on e4, which I don't know if it thought it was a free pawn, but it's not. If my bishop were on b5, d4 would be a good move, but my bishop is in an even better spot. d4, if he tries to move this knight, he's not going to be attacking my bishop, and then I'll just be free to take this pawn. So what could happen is he moves the knight, I take the pawn, and now this knight's got to find somewhere to go. Unless he tries to grab another pawn, he could do this. But see, now this file's open to his king. Uh, I don't know, maybe I could pin the knight right away. We'll see what he does. I'm hoping he gets greedy and tries to take a pawn, take this pawn on d4 either with the pawn or the knight. This could get real ugly for black if his king stays in the center too long. So here's where we're at. Let's see what chess challenger comes up with. Okay, so like I thought it might, the computer decided to capture on d4. I think I'm just going to take the pawn with the knight. This clears the way for f3 to be played to attack this knight, which I'm going to pin in a minute with something, probably rook e1. Or I could just play rook e1 right away. If he's smart, he'd probably defend with d5. Looks like the best move. But see, d5 can't be played if, once I take here, if he tries d5, he's going to lose this knight. So, and if, then if he captures my knight, well then his knight will be under attack by my queen. This, this, if the knight moves. Now, a check like this, I mean, I don't even know. Maybe there's something better. Yeah, this is none of this is going to be very good. I think I'll just go ahead with knight takes d4. Okay, we have a move. Chess challenger has chosen bishop c5, which looks pretty aggressive, attacking my knight with two pieces. It's only defended by one, and maybe he's got some idea of making something happen on f2, but this doesn't really address his biggest issue, which is his king in the center of the board, and mine is safely castled. I think the best move for me is going to be to just take this knight out, open things up. I think the best move after this is going to be queen f3. Um, I'm threatening mate, of course. I'm attacking the knight. If he moves that knight, I can check him, keep his king stuck in the middle for a minute. I also have this c6 pawn I'm looking at. That'll be a fork. Yeah, taking the knight, I think, is the way to start. It's going to all unravel pretty quickly for him now. And the computer has played d takes c6. No surprises there. And I think I'm going to go with queen f3. 
Okay, this chess challenger just does not want to lose. They played f7 to f5. Defending the knight, blocking the threat of mate. I think if I just keep attacking the knight, everything will fall into place. Knight c3, because anytime he moves that knight, even if he takes that knight there, I can check him. I'm hitting the rook and the bishop at the same time. I can take whichever one I want. If he's not careful, yeah, I can take the, the knight and then check him here. If this pawn's gone, he captures that way, then I get the bishop. Yeah, I think the way forward is to play knight c3. All right, queen e7, played by the computer. And this thing is defending annoyingly well. I keep expecting to find some kind of knockout blow, and I'm just not seeing it. What I might do is just play this bishop f4. It's the last piece I need to get developed, and then I can bring this rook into the action. Let's just see how he deals with bishop f4. Okay, computer just played bishop d4, which is interesting. Looking to take out my knight, and I'm thinking that I should just take his knight. And then he'll need to take with the pawn that if he takes with the queen, I'll be able to play the rook to e1 and pin his queen against his king. He'll lose his queen that way. So after that, I don't know. I could throw this check in here if I want. I was looking at g3, hitting this pawn here. The other idea is just to move a rook to the center. I don't really see anything else. If I put a rook here, let's say, if he takes, takes. So I'm just going to take the knight. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so not surprisingly, f takes e4, and I think I'm just going to go queen g3, hitting the pawn on c7. be interesting to see what he does. If he takes the pawn on b2, I can move my rook somewhere and then take on c7. Uh, so I think it'd be good to take this pawn on c7 if he lets me. And then I got ideas of bishop d6 can't be good if I can land that move. So as long as it's safe, it looks pretty safe, queen g3. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so he did take the pawn on b2. And where to put the rook? I think I should hit the bishop. Just so he has to move it, and then I'll definitely get the pawn on c7. Moving the rook to the middle is probably good too. But So, rook a, b1 it is. So queen f6 played. How interesting is that? Protecting the bishop. I think I'm going to take the pawn as planned. Why not just get the pawn and then get the rooks involved? The machine has played a5. He wants to trap my bishop with a4. I think I can just ignore that because if I bring a rook over here to d1, there's the threat of rook to d8 check. He'll have to do he'll probably just have to move this bishop somewhere. I'm moving this rook over instead of this rook. I like keeping this rook on that bishop. Kind of limits where his queen can go. So I think that's a good move. Just get a rook to d1, and I don't know how it's going to go down. We'll just start with rook f to d1 and go from there. And we have a4 from the chess challenger. And he was doing so well up until now. Actually, not really. He was pretty much lost the whole game. But he put up a reasonable defense after he got into a situation where his king was stuck in the middle. And he was pretty much living on borrowed time. But now... I think rook d8 will pretty much settle matters. I don't think he can get away with moving the king. It's the only square. If I take the rook, he doesn't even have time to do this because I got this. Check, winning the queen. If I, th I think he's just going to have to give up, give up his queen like that and then bishop takes. He'll get my bishop, but then, I don't know. I can take the pawn and he's got to move his bishop away and then I'll save this bishop. And He's got like a, a bishop and a rook for the queen. Is that the deal? I should be winning, though. Look at his king in the middle. This has to be bad. Rook d8 check it is. Okay, we've had a few moves. Queen takes d8, as I thought, and then I took his queen. And then rook f8, which is a little bit strange. I'm not sure what the deal is with that move, but I kind of like queen d6 here. I'm threatening checkmate, so he's pretty much got to play bishop f6, I think. But I could do this, check. If he goes here, I get the rook, he gets my bishop. He's only got two bishops for the queen, so that might be the way to go. I don't know. But I'm going to start with this, this queen d6 move. So the computer made the move rook a7. Not sure how I missed this defense, 
but the win should still be pretty simple. I like this. Getting that bishop out of danger, attacking this bishop. If he takes this bishop, then I take with check, and he goes like this. I could just take the bishop, but I like this. This might be the way to go. There might be some kind of mate in here, I don't know, but maybe just take the bishop. It's going to be bishop e6. Boom. Alright, so as I have foreseen, after bishop e6, he took my bishop, took the bishop with check, he took my bishop, and I was thinking I'd just take the bishop, but then I realized that rook d1 check should win a rook. His only move here is king c7, and I'm going to play queen e7 check, and then he'll move his king somewhere and I'll take his rook. So at this point, the game is as good as over. Um, I've got a queen for a bishop, basically. I'll go ahead and play it out to checkmate, see if the program resigns at any point, but I'm not going to make a video for every single move. I'll just do a recap at the end. Okay, so this is how the game finished off. I played rook d1 check as planned, and for some reason, the computer threw its bishop in the way, which didn't change anything except we just lost that bishop for no reason. And there wasn't really a forced checkmate, I don't think, any within a few moves, so it wasn't trying to just forestall checkmate or anything. So I don't know why, it just uh, gave up that bishop. King c7 was played, and then here I was going to go here and win the rook after he moved the king, but I realized that I could do this instead and simplify matters even more after this. I take this rook. Yeah, he took that pawn for some reason. I thought... What I was looking at was this, obviously, and then check, and then I grab the rook. But okay, he, he wants to get a pawn. He's like, I might as well get a pawn out of it since I'm losing uh, all my major pieces now. So I took here, and then he took my rook. And so now it's just a matter of eating up his pawns and checkmating him as quick as possible. Uh, I move my queen here, and he can't really do anything. Set move his pawns up. He can throw a check in here, which is what he did. Takes, takes. C7. He's just shuffling his king back and forth now. And then I got a queen. And at this point, the uh, computer resigned. It started, it made its final move, but it started blinking, and the, the button that said, I lose, was lit up. So, so I got to say that... Uh, the computer did better than I thought it would. In the opening, I thought it was going to be over a lot quicker than it was. So considering how bad its opening decisions were, it actually held out pretty long before I was able to checkmate it or even get it just a really clearly winning position. I think I was positionally better the whole game. But yeah, so next time uh, I might try it on a higher level. Maybe go the next level up, see if it's uh, any tougher to beat. But this is... Definitely interesting. So as promised, here's some analysis of this amazing move that the computer found on move 15 that I could have played. C3. Looks very strange. Just gives up the exchange, right? Bishop takes A1. Well, the point is, now the black bishop is not going to be guarding this E5 square, and we'll see why this is important. So first, let's look at the obvious bishop takes A1. Now, what would you play here as white? What's the most decisive move? Actually, the only winning move is bishop to g5, and the queen simply has no good square. So let's look at all the options. Queen f8, we got queen to e5 check, this runs into a checkmate. King d7, bishop e6 check, king back, discovered check, queen has to go in the way there, and then queen takes, mate. All right, what about queen to d7? Well, rook to d1 here is very strong, attacking the queen. You can see that's a bad square, but... Queen to e5 is actually a checkmate in 6 after king f8. Now we go rook d1. And now Stockfish says just take the rook out is your best defense, but it's still going to run into checkmate in 5 more moves because we still have this checkmate threat here. And I guess, you know, you got to start putting the bishop in the way and stuff. So that's not working. Maybe the best try is queen to c5 here. And then we go queen takes c7. We're hitting this square here, looking to checkmate. So let's say queen takes g5. That doesn't work because queen to f7 check, king d8, rook d1 check, and now 
your best option here is to just sacrifice the queen because you're getting checkmated. So that's not working. What about bishop d7 here? Here again, we got rook d1, we're hitting the bishop. Queen f5 defends, but then queen d6, we're looking to mate here. There's just too many squares to mate on, and there doesn't seem to be a good defense here. Um, yeah, if you go there, it's queen takes d7, checkmate. All right, so none of that is working. So let's look at what happens if bishop doesn't take the rook on a1. What was the point of c3? Well, as far as I can tell, the e5 square is still important. Black's best defense in this position is to try to get his bishop to e6. Now, if you don't play c3, if you go rook a to d1, bishop e6 is good, bishop g5, and then the queen can go to f7, and you're fine. There's no queen to e5 at any point because the bishop still has control of that diagonal. But after c3, let's say you try this bishop e6 idea. It's a little different because bishop g5, queen here, and now we got queen e5, and this bishop's pinned. So, you know, if you try to take that uh, rook out, well, this is going to be bad. We're taking out the bishop while hitting the queen. Now, where's the queen going to go? You want to go here? Well, this is going to run into a checkmate, starting with this discovered check, similar to the variation we already saw. So, it's all about that uh, e5 square. Just, you know, c3. Bishop is not going to be participating in the defense.